is the most recent price cut to full self-driving, meaning that full self-driving is in trouble? Is Tesla cutting costs to further the adoption? Today, I wanna to talk about full self-driving. I wanna talk about the history. What full self-driving was back in 2018 when I took delivery of my car? What has the journey of the pricing of full self-driving been over the last couple of years? And what recently happened with the price what it means for Tesla and for full self-driving and all of that. So let's talk about it. Okay, so let's talk about back in 2018. That's when I took delivery of my long range Model 3. Now, when I took delivery of my vehicle, uh, it didn't come with autopilot. All of Tesla's vehicles today come with basic level autopilot for free. Back in 2018, that was not the case. When you took delivery of your Tesla, if you did not add enhanced autopilot, you got zero autopilot features. That means no adaptive cruise control. You got cruise control, but not adaptive cruise control. So I knew I had to add enhanced autopilot. And that was $5,000 back in 2018. Now, enhanced autopilot came with adaptive cruise control, summon, lane change, exiting and, uh, and getting on the freeway. And so it included everything but full self-driving had zero things um, that you were gonna get at the time of purchasing it. So I opted to not get it. It was gonna cost an extra $3,000. And I said, well, why would I spend $3,000 on some stuff that doesn't exist today, nor will I be benefiting from? I'd rather take that $3,000 and put it in the bank and let it appreciate. So I opted for just enhanced autopilot and it was amazing. After that, there were some controversies on pricing and so forth. And so, long story short, there was a brief stint of a fire sale. And during that fire sale, full self-driving became offered to those with enhanced autopilot for $2,000. Needless to say, I didn't think twice about that and snagged it up immediately. I wasn't getting anything out of it, but I thought at $2,000, why not? That is pretty damn cheap. So that means all in. I'm in at $7,000. 5000 for enhanced autopilot plus 2000 for the full self-driving. And today, that same feature set of full self-driving costs $12,000. So we came from seven grand back in 2018 to now $12,000 today. That's a huge difference. So let's talk about what happened in between that. You see, after that, full self-driving was not even being offered. You weren't getting any of the features. And so the biggest argument and the biggest lack of adoption was because you couldn't do anything with full self-driving. You had it, but there were no features of it that were available to you. And so uh, to kind of further propel that, full self-driving beta launched. Um, and that went out to very few people. It started to grow and those people were talking about it. People were getting excited for it. And so Tesla knew that they are drumming up the business. And so to go along with that, they increased the price of full self-driving. It took a drastic jump. It went up slowly, slowly and got up to $10,000, which a lot of people were like, that's a lot of money for full self-driving. But alongside that, Tesla decided to launch a subscription model. And this was really nice because if you didn't want to lump down that 10 grand, you could opt to turn it on and off as you want on a monthly subscription of $199 a month. Not bad when in comparison to $10,000, but now what people started to do was kind of weigh out the differences. Also, full self-driving beta wasn't available to everyone. It was just select owners. And so there was no guarantee. Well, that $10,000 for full self-driving eventually turned into $12,000, which is what it is today. A really astronomical, exorbitant amount of money. And when you compare it to buying a vehicle, what's supposed to be a cheap electric vehicle at around anywhere from thirty-five dollars to $40,000, $10,000 or $12,000 is a lot of money in comparison to the price of the vehicle. So that became very hard to stomach. Um, I think adoption slowed down for $12,000. There was still the subscription, but $200 is a still a steep asking um, and people were allowed to turn it on or off. That fast forward all the way into current day. What recently just happened was a complete change, a really drastic drop in full self-driving pricing. Uh, let, me, let me get out of the car and talk to you about it. Okay, so what Tesla decided to do 
was they took their subscription model of full self-driving at $199 and cut it in half. The full self-driving now costs $99 a month, which is such a easy stomachable amount. But the biggest thing about that is if you take that $99 a month, you multiply by 12 and then multiply that by 10, and you look at that at a 10 year lifespan, it would take you 10 years of subscribing to full self-driving at the $100 a month to equate what full self-driving costs today outright. So if you're not looking at holding onto your car for more than 10 years, it doesn't make sense to purchase full self-driving at $12,000. But remember, just last month, there were users that spent $12,000 on full self-driving. So, in typical Tesla fashion, that's left a bad taste in a lot of people's mouths. Of course, some people are really happy with the new pricing. It allows them to easily subscribe and, and, and not be committed and not have to owe that $12,000. I recently sent it over to my friend who literally within seven minutes subscribe to full self-driving at the $100 price point, especially with as good as full self-driving is now with the latest version, 12.3.4. Um, it's absolutely amazing and a no-brainer. But what about those who recently subscribed? Or what about those that recently purchased the $12,000 full self-driving fee? Uh, let's talk about what this might mean for full self-driving and for Tesla. Why do you think they did that? Okay, so a couple things. Number one, I think Tesla did this because full self-driving, the latest version, is really, really good. They want more people to experience that and see that. A $100 entry point subscription is a lot easier than a $12,000 straight out fee. I think it's a no-brainer. And the more people that are using full self-driving, the more data Tesla has to train the system on. And that means if it's already so good and we didn't have the price lower, means it's only gonna get even better the more people that subscribe. That's number one. Number two, now, what about the people that have spent so much money on the system? You could consider that the early adopter fee is one way to look at it. Uh, or the other way is some are starting to ask for things, like, hey, the ability to transfer full self-driving to the next vehicle. If I spend $12,000 on it, you look at it like software. If I buy a software for my computer and I upgrade to a new computer, I can install that software on that computer as well. And full self-driving is a software that should not be limited to just the vehicle. If I buy another vehicle, it should allow me to do there. And if I cannot transfer it, what's the incentive to upgrade vehicles? I would love to get a new vehicle, but I would also love to hold my full self-driving that I've paid money for. Now granted, I'm not at the $12,000 bucket, but some are. Now, if you do that, you've kind of benefited both parties. Uh, Tesla's gonna be able to sell more cars and uh, users are gonna have the benefit of holding onto their full self-driving. And then their old car, if they sell it, that gives the opportunity for someone buying that to be able to subscribe to full self-driving on that or purchase full self-driving on that vehicle. So more full self-driving sold. I think it's a win-win and that would be a really good option. But I don't know what Tesla's thinking. Well, whatever it is, full self-driving has become a whole lot more affordable. I don't think anything is wrong with full self-driving. I think that they are just propelling it forward. They're giving more people access. Once you try it, you're gonna get hopefully addicted and want to use it more. More data, train the system, system gets better. Um, but yeah, I don't know what's gonna happen to the purchase price of full self-driving. Maybe it goes away. Maybe it stays a subscription only service. But if that's the case, would that open up transferability? I don't know, but I would love, but let me tell you this, in my opinion, what I would love to do is I would love to hold on to full self-driving that I invested in. I would love to be able to move that to any vehicle I choose to going forward. It'll keep me in the Tesla community, the Tesla family of vehicles, allowing me to change vehicles that work better for my needs and my wants and my family while still holding on to software that I invested in really early and helped train the system. I don't know, that's my opinion. I'm curious to know, what do you think? Leave them down in the comments down below. And if you haven't already, make sure you like and subscribe this video. We'll see what full self-driving future holds. I don't know, but I'm liking this $100 subscription model. If you haven't already subscribed, make sure you go into the app and subscribe, try out full self-driving. It's pretty impressive.
All right, see you guys.